Hello, this is Freddy Gold. I'm Freddy. I'm Gold. And today? <laughs> uh, so we are making bubble fish, which is, I, I think, what we've chosen to call the blowfish pattern because it's just cuter and apparently it is another name for blowfish, which I never knew. As you can see, we're starting with those luscious puckered lips. <laughs> uh, I think I talked about these maybe already, but you, you're doing something a little awkward. You're making some bobbles and a couple essies, and then another bobble and another couple essies or something like that into this magic ring. It's a little awkward to do, but you will not regret it when you see the results. They're luscious. Like Jenner lips. This is our free pattern for the Ready Goat in Atlantis series. Yeah, so this accompanies like the Mersin Crabby, which is currently in testing. By the time you see this video, it'll probably be in the world for real. Um, and then we have a uh, Freddy Corn pattern in this series, which is a Capricorn basically, but um, because the top half of Capricorn is a goat. Obviously, we had to toy with the name. Uh, and then finally, we have Submarine. I think that's it for Atlantis, right? Yes. I hope that you have been enjoying this series. It, it has been taking us a long time to make it, but we love it. We've gotten, like, a little more complicated in our pattern writing <laughs> between the last couple series. So, like, we're... We're learning how to kind of keep up with that, I guess. And yeah, way. and even though we have like ways to do certain things, all our pattern creating processes so long. You know, Freddie usually writes the pattern and then she tests it before she actually sends it to me. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you. Girl. And then I, I design it, edit the pictures of the process. After that, we try to tested thank you to our testers thank you very much to our testers it's really terrifying like we're relatively new i mean we've been working on stuff for what now almost two years we started in the pandemic of 2020 like summer so what is it one year and a half yeah something like that but we really didn't show anything until last year like right at a, around the summer so a year yeah, of like putting patterns out there. So, okay, back to the pattern. Now that we've like, we've gotten past the face region, we're now making a bunch of bobbles. And those are the bubbles. They're bubble bubbles, bubble bubbles. Okay, so we're bubble bubbling. And um, I think there's a couple rounds where it's like, this is me like winging it, guys. Check the pattern. Don't just trust what I'm saying. But I believe there's a couple of rounds where it's like, I, I believe a, a four step bobble, and then it goes up to a five step bobble, and then it'll eventually it'll turn back to a four step bobble. So basically, like, I believe that it's like there's a bobble round, and then there's like a round or two of single crochets to build a little space in between, and then another bobble round. Um, and there's all, but within that, there's also like some increasing and decreasing going on. So. It's not complicated. This is definitely like fairly beginner. So like if you're if you're just starting out in the Ami world, no sweat, you totally got this. If you need to know how to make a bobble, I'm pretty sure we have um, like a Instagram video and probably another video on our website just demonstrating it. It's not hard to do. You just need a small amount of practice, you know, do two or three bobbles. Yeah, we have it in the cookie videos. I think we have a special one for bubbles. That's when I confess I never made a bubble before. Oh yeah, that's right. That's And, that's and then right. everybody was like, make a cookie of raisins with bubbles. And I was like, yeah, people. Yeah, and then I publicly shamed you. <laughs> they were like, you know what we love? Raisins. Why don't you make a raisin cookie? Um, <laughs> yes, your memory is something else. Woohoo! I have a, I have something in my favor. Sometimes it's not good. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I remember things I shouldn't. You've got many things. Just 
say no. Let me tell you what your grandma told me the other day. Just kidding. Yeah, she sees dead people also. <laughs> just a thing about her. It's fine. Whatever she tells you is fine. Just you don't tell her anything. <laughs> oh, grandma knows. <laughs> grandma knows. So the body's pretty simple. There's not like a ton. Like other than, you know, getting comfortable making bobbles if you aren't already. There's not like a ton that you are going to need help with on the main part of the body. But uh, you should definitely, if you're going to make this, get like dark black nail. Yeah, look at how awesome your nails look like. So we had a really dedicated pattern tester initially who has had to take a little break from testing. And so now we're like... Thank you, Jen. Yes, thank you. Uh, so now we're like in the place where we're requesting testers from the community of crocheters and Ami makers online. And it's really terrifying because all the imposter syndrome like sets in hard and <laughs> it's, it's it's also really fun yeah. because you get to see like the thing that we've written turned into actual real life amis but still it's terrifying oh it's so terrifying um every time there's a question i'm like oh no Nothing I did make sense. Uh, <laughs> but but don't you feel like we're writing, like, we're basically like writing 3D printer patterns and then like our testers are the, the 3D printers. Not to like dehumanize you all, you're amazing, but it, it kind of feels like that. Like it's uh, mind blowing that it's possible to write patterns that other people can perfectly interpret and reproduce. It's really cool. It's an awesome feeling. It is an amazing feeling and actually so fun to work with the testers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're being, we have been finding very amazing, talented people in the crochet community and getting to meet them. That is like the best part. You know, another person that you can nerd out about your uh, love for crochet. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then they have these weird like tricks that you've never seen before mm -hmm. that like make life so much better that this didn't come from a tester but it was like somebody that i guess started following us and was liking our our patterns the other day and she had on her page like posted this video of a way to do like so like if you were doing like for example you're making your granny square blanket or whatever and you get to the point where you turn the work or you rotate the work and then you chain up to add height for it to begin your next round. It was like a way to make your first double crochet without doing the two chains. So it looks like almost identical to an actual double crochet and you get the height and you don't have any of that like weirdness that you always get when you do the chain up method. It blew my mind. That's the best part, exciting. the things that we're learning. <laughs> so this first part yeah. of the video we wanted to dedicate it to the testers, uh, thank you so much. You are very talented and thank you for helping us to have amazing patterns to yeah. show the community and to make it. We really enjoy talking to you about crochet. Since our husbands are tired of hearing us. <laughs> we should, yeah, for sure. Uh, we should uh, remember, well, no, they're not, I don't feel like they're tired of it. They just don't understand it because they don't do it. I, I feel like the marketing intern still is calling it uh, knitting. Yeah, he does that to piss me off. And I and <laughs> I finally said to him like a couple weeks ago, please stop making that joke. At first it was funny. Now it's actually just hurting my feelings. I, like, because my I, business has been Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I almost like started crying. I was, I was probably like a little hormonal or something. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? He Sometimes felt he so happens. bad. He felt so bad, and then he <laughs> saw. And then I felt really bad because I was trying to learn to Tunisian crochet. Which Tunisian crochet, like I'm sure a lot of the people watching this know what it is, but if not, it it is like it is crochet, but rather than like working a single stitch at a time and like completing the full stitch you pass in one direction like basically loading your crochet hook with 
the first half of a stitch and then you when you get to the end of your work you go back in the direction you came from like completing the stitch and removing the the loop from your hook so when you are working it looks like you have a loaded knitted knitting needle and my husband like very sweetly was like oh wow what are you knitting and then he saw the hook on the end like he obviously had never seen Tunisian crochet before so then he saw the hook on the end and then had like we had just had that conversation going pale and he's like oh no i'm sorry it's crochet and i was like it's cool this one actually really looks like knitting <laughs> but also it, it's crochet <laughs> I, I felt bad for making him feel bad <laughs> but it but also it's crochet but it was a, it was a learning moment <laughs> we're not a gang like the crochet gang that is like just crochet we respect knitting. We love it. No, knitting's amazing. Yeah, knitting is beautiful. I do it, albeit kind of crappily, but, um, but like, you know, you should know the difference. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're husbands. Come on. That's like, that's our business. That isn't like our tag name. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Crochet. Yeah. No, for the good knitting. Right. I mean, and if we open that wing, if we open that wing of the company, then we'll have to have a whole other Instagram account. We're gonna have to have. We're gonna have to find somebody who's actually a good knitter, also, to join us. <laughs> <laughs> I love crocheted amigurumis, obviously, and I love crocheted like blankets and stuff. Gorgeous, and I love crochet because I feel like. It's more like it keeps your attention more. I feel like you're always doing something different. Like the my struggle with knitting is like knitting to me makes like of the of the kind of fiber art fabric making realm. I mean weaving's also obviously amazing, but knitting is gorgeous. Like it, like I want a knitted sweater. I don't want a crocheted sweater for more than one reason. Not that there are no cool crocheted sweaters because I've seen some ball or crocheted sweaters out there but it's like knitting is like more elastic it's uh not as dense so you don't like it's not as thick like it just there's like there are things like they each have their different strengths in my head so like I love knitting and I go through these phases where I'm like oh my god I just want to make a beautiful sweater but my struggle is that like at my skill level of knitting if I try to make a sweater, it's got to be still relatively simplistic. So uh, I just, I'm like doing, you know, stockinette stitch for, you know, a hundred rows or something. And that is really boring. <laughs> Whereas like if I'm going to be crocheting, like something's changing up every row or two. Or like I'm increasing, I'm decreasing, I'm shaping something. So like to me, like my kind of quasi- ADD is satisfied by crochet in a way that knitting doesn't satisfy it. Oh, okay, here we go. Sorry, I missed a lot. Okay, so now we're making the tail, and um, it's a little strange. We're like making kind of like a little funnel, but we're only really doing decreases on one half of the work. So one side is decreasing, and one side's kind of. Oh, well, no, that's a lie. I think we might be decreasing everywhere, but we're decreasing quicker on the back side. This is a place where the calculus lover in each of us can take great joy because the rate of change is different at different parts of this tail. But yeah, you start with the chain, but you're working in the round, so you're gonna join, like, so the last chain you make, you join with a single crochet to the first chain you make and then you continue working in the round. It's a little awkward that first like round after the chain because you're working into it. And then when you start like doing the rest of it, it's easier. It's just like not, at least in our patterns, it's not real common to have unevenly spaced decreases. And basically you're just like decreasing faster on one side so that it's like a shaping 
issues. So like you're trying to keep the top of it somewhat flat and the bottom is is like decreasing to, to like um, slope in more quickly. And now you can see like where we're attaching it to the body. You can see we've placed the sort of flatter side of the tail up so that kind of you have this shape where like there's a big belly of the bubble fish and then the tail slopes back up to the top. I can't remember what the round number is, but you're sewing it to the body basically where the number of stitches, the 30 stitches that start the tail, with those chains, matches up basically with 30 stitches of the body. And now we're gonna do, I believe we're doing the side flippers, the dorsals. Um, these are fairly easy. These are a lot. I think they might be the same as the tail of the Mersin. So if you've bought the Mersin pattern, which you should, you'll already know how to make these. The only difference, if I'm remembering correctly, is that you do a color change when you flatten the work. Oh, look, you can see I effed it up because I forgot to do the color change. So then you flatten the work and you crochet through both sides, right? Like I did with the new color. And now you're making bloops. I'm calling them that because I don't know what else to call them. And I believe you make two bloops just like the Mersin tail. It's, it's like a little heart. Okay, so we make the whites of the eyes, and I want to say it's like eight single crochets, and then maybe there's a second round, I can't actually remember. <laughs> uh, and then we invisible join, we have this cute little circle, and now we're going to make uh, the irises with a darker color, and we're going to make, I think it's seven single crochets, if I'm remembering correctly. Do whatever the pattern says, you don't have to do what I'm saying right now. And then you're gonna leave a tail because you're gonna sew this to the whites of the eye. It matches my nails beautifully, by the way, if I say it myself. So you sew them into the eye and then you're gonna like pin the eyes to your face and just see where you want them. But here's the thing. I like overlap the cheeks with the eye a little bit. So before you sew anything on, get everything pinned where you want it and like place the cheeks slightly under the eye. It's super quiet, you want it. Just do it, or do whatever you want. Do whatever you want, but that's what I wanted. I wanna see what you make, please make it. And then, like, sort of less forcefully, I wanna say, but wow, it looks so lonely because most of your other amigurumis are terrestrial animals. <laughs> Maybe you need more underwater <laughs> friends to accompany Bubblefish. Uh -huh. So why don't you grab a hobby and start crocheting by a pattern? <laughs>